next gathering is going to be on October 24th for Halloween, but we're doing it a little different. We're calling it Hero Night. All right? We are, someone told me not to say this, but I want to explain it. We're going to be the Halloween alternative. We're going to be even better because we're a church. All right? We want you to come here and hang out with us for Halloween and dress up as your favorite hero. Okay? A hero can be anyone. It could be a superhero. It could be your dad. It could be your mom. It could be someone from your family. It could be a teacher. It could be your pastor. No, just kidding. All right. Um, but dress up as your favorite hero or the best one of all. Who's, who's the greatest hero of all? Exactly, Jesus. If I see a bunch of Jesuses come up, I am going to be so happy. That's going to be so awesome. Um, I'll give you guys a hint. I'm not going to dress up like Jesus, but it is going to be a Bible character. I promise you that. All right. So Hero Night, October 24th. If you have not been to our Halloween party, and I'm pretty sure most of you have, it is one of the biggest events that we have besides prom. Like people come out of the woodworks for this. We have close to, I think the last time we had like almost 300 people here. I don't know why everybody wants to come here for Halloween, but we seem to do it right because everybody keeps coming back. Yes. So what is it called? Hero Night. That's right. Dress up as your favorite hero. October 24th. Oh, I forgot to mention two things. Because it's such a special night, I'm having catered food. All right? But that means it's $10 a person to eat. Okay? Catered food is expensive. I'm sorry. $10 a person to eat. So uh, another thing is it's going to go from 6 to 8.30 p.m. It's going to go half an hour longer because we have a lot of fun planned. All right? I'm going to keep on repeating that. $10 for dinner. We're going to go to 8.30. We're going to go half an hour longer this time around for our hero night. Okay? So make plans for that. We want you guys all to be here. The next one I don't have a picture for. But I want to remind you guys, if you guys just come to our Thursday nights for our church service, we have other things that we do every single week. We have Sunday school classes that meet at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. here on campus in a, in a room in the same building but behind us. And we want you guys to be a part of it. Um, we have Sharon Bautista who leads it. We also have other volunteers who lead it. And it's really cool. You guys can learn about Jesus. They have crafts and you can color. I encourage you guys to come. It's at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. Because I know we meet once a month here. But if you want to hang out with us and you want to get more connected, come on a Sunday and join us then. Okay? Last thing. This was an unexpected one, but a very good one. Who here speaks Spanish? Okay, this is mostly for the family members and volunteers. I just found out that there is a Spanish online, um, like a Bible study or group, women's group, that is for any families who have um, an individual or a loved one with special needs, but they speak Spanish. If you need support or you want to join a group that speaks Spanish, I want to point you to Gloria Mendoza. Stand up, Gloria. Raise your hand. If you're interested in that, go speak to her, and you guys can join that group. She wants you guys to join. All right? I know that we have a lot of Spanish speakers, and our Spanish church, the ministry for Crossroads, has been growing. Before COVID, it was like at 250. Now it's close to 600 people that show up for our Spanish church. Okay? So there are a lot of people. So be... Um, Tell people about that one. We want that to grow. The online um, Bible study group for women who have individuals with special needs. All right. Now, I'm very excited. Um, who here knows Samantha? Samantha Soderman. If you don't know Samantha, she's amazing. She is probably, well, okay, I shouldn't say it this way. She's a very talented teacher, and she has blessed us to serve in this ministry. And she is going to do our Bible message tonight. All right. So I'm going to ask Samantha to come on up. And she has a very, very fun message to share with you tonight. Give her a round of applause. Hello. Hello, everyone. How are you guys? 
I'm Samantha. If you don't know me, please come and introduce yourself later. Um, my husband and I have been serving in the special needs ministry for probably a little over three years now, and it's one of our favorite things to do. So we're happy to be here with you tonight. Um, when Andy asked me to do this message, <clears throat> I got to say I was really nervous. I talk to people all day long. That's my job. I talk to kids all day long, but not really to adults. So I was really nervous. You might even say I was scared. But then I found out that our theme for the night was baseball. And I got super excited because baseball at our family, in our family, was a big deal. My son played. Our daughter played. Um, we spent a lot of time on the baseball field and learned a lot of lessons. So um, I was so excited to share some of those lessons with you. And then I got nervous again. I was thinking, would I be able to find the right scriptures to go with my message? Would I be nervous talking to so many people? Um, would I do a good job? And so you know what I did? I prayed. I did. I said a prayer. So if you guys, I'm going to share my prayer with you if you guys want to pray with me. Um, this is what I said. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to speak at our next special needs event. Thank you for this amazing community. And thank you for all the families volunteers and participants that we now call friends. Thank you for Pastor Andy and Rosarelli. They're such a blessing to all of us, and we are so grateful for their friendship. Lord, please give me the courage and wisdom to bring this message tonight in a way that touches each and every person here. Help me to glorify you in all that I say and do, Lord. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. So, you know what happened after I prayed that prayer? I got the weirdest, most the best sense of peace that just kind of fell over me. I wasn't nervous anymore. I'm nervous right now, but I wasn't nervous then. <laughs> um, if you only remember one thing that I say tonight, remember that, that, that experience for me. When I was nervous, when I was scared, I prayed. Who out there likes to do that when they're nervous or scared or remembers, I should say, to do that? Good. I see a lot of hands up. Um, why do we pray? Why do we pray? For strength, for wisdom, for knowledge. I love it. Why else? Protection. I love it. Why else do we pray? When we're anxious, yes, or scared or nervous. Why else? Say it again, honey. One more time. If you're mad, you can pray. Yeah. Did you know that you can pray to God when you're mad? Even if you're mad at him, he can take it. He is a big God, and he understands all of our feelings. Raise your hand if you've ever been a little mad at God. Mm, or maybe mad at your situation. That happens to me, too. Um, does anyone ever just pray to be grateful, to say thank you to God for all the amazing things in your life? That's an important one. We have to remember to not just come to God with our burdens and our, you know, when we're upset or when we're anxious or when we need him for something. We have to remember to come to God when we are and tell him how thankful we are for the things that we have. So that's a big, that's a big one for me. Um, what happens when you pray? Does God answer your prayer like that? Does he give you always what you want? No, not always. How many of you out there have ever prayed a prayer over and over and over again asking for something and God said, not yet, not yet, or maybe just no, that's not what's best for you. I know what's best for you. I'm God and that's not it. I've had those prayers. Me too. It can be frustrating. Um, praying for me, even when I don't get my answers that I want is always a source of comfort. And I feel peace. Even if I'm sad still or upset, I still always feel just a little more peaceful. Um, kind of like when I was a kid, I'd be running around, you know, fall, hurt myself. What do you do when you fall and get hurt when you're little? You run to your mom or dad, right? Or whoever is your guardian, whoever's taking care of you. That's what I used to do. And it didn't even matter if I was still hurting, as soon as I saw them, my tears would stop. Or maybe my tears would perk up a little bit because I'd get more attention. But they would make me feel better. They just comforted me. 
And that's what God wants us to do with him. Um, He wants us to go to him so he can comfort us. He's our Abba Father. He loves us more than we can ever imagine. And he doesn't want to see us in pain. He doesn't want to see um, our hearts break. But he knows what's best for us. So the one thing that I forget to do, and maybe you guys do too, is sometimes I forget to pray. Do you ever forget to pray? Like when you're in a hard time or when you have a lot to do or when you're prepping for a message that you're very nervous to give. I forget to pray sometimes. And we have to remember to seek him. That means we have to talk to him. We have to pray to him. We have to ask for his help. And we all have to remember to do that. Can you guys remember that? All right. Okay. Who likes baseball? Who out there loves some baseball? Andy kind of jumped ahead of the game. But my question for you tonight was, you have a favorite team? Who likes the Angels? What about the Dodgers? Where are my Yankee fans? Woo! All right. Lots of different reasons that we choose a team, right? A favorite team. Those are some players up there. Next slide, please. But what makes people choose their favorite team? Sometimes they have a favorite player that plays for a team, and that's why you like that team. Um, Maybe your family has always loved a team, and you just kind of inherited that. Uh, Maybe you like the mascot or the color of the team or the location. We live in California, Southern California. We have a lot of Dodgers and Angels fans, right? Well, my husband and I actually weren't born in California. We were born in New York. And it's kind of like a religion there. You have to like the Yankees. I don't know who the Mets are, but the Yankees, that was, that was, yeah, that was our jam. So next slide. I'd give a little love to my Yankees out there. Where are my Yankee fans? Thank you. Thank you. No booing. No booing. This is church. But even though we like the Yankees and we still root for the Angels and some other teams, Um, My favorite teams to watch always were always the the teams that my kids played on, that our children. I always say my kids. They're our children. (laughs) And I always used to love watching them play. Those were my favorite teams. I love to cheer my kids on. I love to watch my husband coach when he could. Um, I love to see how excited they would get when they would make a great play or win a game. Some of my favorite memories raising our children were on the baseball field. And there they are. Sorry, my computer wasn't working. We're doing this by paper tonight. Um, But you know what happened when they didn't win? They didn't look that cute. They weren't smiling. They would lose sometimes, right? And how do you feel when your favorite team loses? You get mad. What else? Sad angry. Anyone cry? Yeah, it happens sometimes. I might say I've probably seen Mr. Sodeman cry a time or two about a team losing or I don't know, maybe. Um, Yeah, we felt all those feelings too. And the truth is, we weren't really following Jesus at that time. So I didn't always act like Jesus might have wanted me to during some of those times. Not really proud of that. Next slide. All right. Who likes roller coasters? Oh, you guys are so brave. I do not like roller coasters. No. They do. I don't do well on roller coasters. But as I was wrestling to write this message, um, my nerves were getting the best of me. And I realized that I kept feeling excited and then scared and then excited and then nervous and then excited And I was like, hey, I remember a time when I felt like this, when I used to watch my own kids play. I was so excited to get to their games. We got uniforms cleaned. We'd get to the game. And they'd get out on the field, and then I'd get nervous for them. Um, If they had a great game, it was awesome. We would celebrate. Um, If they had a hard game, sometimes it was really hard 
uh, to go home with them that night. They'd be upset. Um, and the ups and downs of all of these emotions, kind of like riding a roller coaster without the fun, uh, it was exhausting. It was really, um, really tiring for me. And I wished, when I was thinking about that, I wished that I had been following Jesus then like I am now. I wished I had had the peace that Jesus gives me when I pray, when I was sitting there on those bleachers, when I was watching them strike out, when I was, um, you know, feeling for them on the field as they were getting yelled at by a coach. I wish I had had that peace because I think I would have treated it a little bit differently. Do you guys have anything in your life that might be taking you on an emotional roller coaster like this? The highs and lows and sadness and anxiety. I see some hands up there. Shout it out. What's going on? Oh, cancer. Yes, horrible. Injuries, heart attacks, family, friends, sick, all of those things, right? They just take us on that emotional roller coaster. Um, I hope that you guys are praying through those times. I hope that you are remembering to pray. If you allow Jesus to comfort you and bring you that peace, I think being on Team Jesus is a pretty good place to be. All right. So as I was kind of doing this and thinking about baseball and the emotional roller coaster and thinking about my walk with Jesus, I realized baseball and my walk with Jesus have a lot of similarities even some differences, and I wanted to share those with you guys. So when you play baseball, you need equipment, right? What do you need to play baseball? You need catcher's gear. My son was a catcher. That stuff's not cheap. You need a helmet to protect your head. You need hats. You need uniforms. You got to look good on the field, right? What else? You need a bat. What are you going to hit with the bat? Lots and lots of baseballs. Those are not cheap either. So if you show up to the field with none of those things, will they let you play? No, they're not going to let you play. It's not safe, right? What I realized, though, about my walk with Jesus is that we also need some equipment to follow Jesus. But the difference is we don't have to pay for it. It's something that God gives us, like a gift. The first thing that you need in your walk with Jesus is faith. And what do I mean by faith? Next slide, please. So Hebrews 11:6 says, Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. Whatever challenges we face in life, we need to trust that God has a plan for us. Even in those hard times, in the good times, in the bad times, he has a plan for those who trust in him. We have to trust him. That's hard to do sometimes. Raise your hand if that's ever been hard for you. Yeah, that's tough. The second thing that God equips us with, or gives us, is prayer. We talked about that a little bit already. God gave us a way to talk to him. We can't see him or feel him sometimes, but we can talk to him and even ask for his help when we're struggling. But he's not going to just show up in our life and fix things for us. We have to ask for his help. Okay? We have to ask and we have to want him to do it. Okay. Next slide, please. Ephesians 6.18 says, pray in the spirit at all times. Pray with all kinds of prayers and ask for everything you need. Do this. To do this, you must always be ready. Never give up. Always pray for all God's people. I will tell you that I struggle with that sometimes. Praying for people who are not kind to you is hard. Praying for people who want to hurt you is so hard. But it says we must pray for all God's people. 
And the third thing he gave us, the Bible, inside of this beautiful book are scriptures and lots and lots of stories um, where Jesus just is so kind to us. He knows that we don't know very much. <laughs> and if I'm being honest, I don't feel like I know anything some days. But one of the sayings that our family uses since we started following Jesus is it's all in the book. Yep. If you have a problem, if you're struggling with anxiety, there's a story in here for you. If you are struggling with sickness or, um, I don't know, problems at work, there's a story in here for you. And you know what makes me feel good when I read some of these stories? These people are way more messed up than me. There's a lot of really bad people in the Bible. And God tells us these stories to comfort us and to show us that he doesn't want perfect people. He's not only calling for the best people. He takes all of us. All right. My next lesson that I learned putting my kids, our kids through baseball, is that baseball is expensive. I said that a little bit already. I'm going to say it again because it's really expensive. There's lessons, there's travel teams, there's tournaments, practices, uniforms. Every year they need new gear. It's very expensive. But you know what it costs to follow Jesus? It's free for us. Jesus already paid the price. He died on the cross for us so that we would be able to come to him and find the peace that he provides. It doesn't cost us a thing. All you have to do is choose him. You can't buy your way into heaven. Accepting Jesus is the only way. You can't earn it. You just have to accept him. Next slide, please. God says that whoever believes in him shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I might have skipped one. I'm going to tell it to you anyway. This one's kind of famous. You might know this one. John 3.16 says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's pretty rad. Um, and then Romans 10, 19. I'm not sure if we have a slide for that. Um, thank you. <laughs> says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to be the best. You just have to ask. Okay, last lesson about baseball. How many of you have ever played before? Raise your hand. I know a lot of you guys play. Baseball is competitive. What does that mean? It means you've got to work hard and all, you're, always, you're always practicing trying to get better and better and better. There's always going to be someone that's a little bit better than you or works a little bit harder. It takes a lot. And to play at the higher levels, to play in college, to play in the pros, you have to have talent. That's kind of just a gift. You have to have that. You have to work hard. You have to sacrifice. You have to have perseverance. You can't give up. And even if you do all those things, do you know how many people actually make it from, high school uh, from a high school baseball team to the pros? Less than 1%. So, hmm, there's about 100 people in here, I'm guessing. Let's say this whole room, you were all on a high school baseball team. And your dream for all of you is to go to the big leagues. You want to play for th the best team, the Yankees, right? Guess what? Hey, no booing. <laughs> Guess what? Even though it's your all of your dreams, a hundred of you, only one person gets to do that. Does that seem fair to you? You all worked this hard. You all sacrificed. You all had perseverance. You all uh, have talent. Does that seem fair that only one person gets to go? No. But life's not fair. It wasn't meant to be. But guess what? 
Jesus doesn't do that with us. He wants every single one of you. All of us. He wants all of us to follow him. He doesn't have tryouts. There are no cuts. He doesn't take only the best 1%. He wants every single one of us. All you have to do is just choose to follow him. Is there one more slide at the end? Oh. 1 John 5.1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the, is the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. Did you see that first word? Everyone. Everyone. Isn't it pretty amazing to know that you don't have to win God's heart? <clears throat> he already loves you more than you could ever imagine. You don't have to be the best player. It's not a competition. He wants all of us. You don't have to be perfect. We all make mistakes. We all sin. But God knows about our mistakes before we even make them. He knows we're going to mess up. Did you know that? That's kind of crazy to think that. God already knows our whole life. He knows we're going to make mistakes. And guess what? He still loves us in spite of our mistakes. Our God is a loving, patient God. He meets us right where we are. <clears throat> he walks beside us in the good times, in the bad times, and he won't ever trade you. What a blessing it is to be on Team Jesus. Thank you, guys. Sam, what about that video? Did you still want to play it? Let's play the video, and then why don't you explain why you want to play that video? Okay, so I put a little video clip in here. Sorry, I tried to shorten it. It's like a minute long. Um, how many of you know Al Albert Pujols? Anybody know him? Yeah, pretty famous baseball player, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's Angel, pretty, right? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know my thing. Yeah, no, he played for the Angels. Um, pretty famous baseball player. He actually has a daughter with Down syndrome. And he has been, first of all, he's a huge Christian. And um, you don't always see that in public uh, sports and things like that. And he is very open about his faith. He loves Jesus. And his daughter is the cutest little thing. Um, and he has a foundation for um, people with special needs. And I just think he's such a great person. And I wanted to share just a little clip of how he interacts with some of uh, the other players on the field. All right. Can you play that video? What a night it turns out to be. For this, the 86th Major League Baseball All-Star Game in Cincinnati, the best from the National League against the best from the American League. Jack is really a young and promising player. He just said, uh, I'm wishing the best. And, you know, I, what we did last night it wasn't even like planning. It's just something that they just happened in natural. If I would have seen him down the street the same way, like I see him this morning, having a daughter with Down Sandra, I know how special is that. And, and uh, that's my passion, being around those kids and those adults. And uh, it's pretty special to see him here uh, and, and knowing him and his family like I have now. Thank you, Sam. Can we give Sam a round of applause? She did a wonderful job.